Recently, AMD got in touch with me and asked if I would like to take a look at the new RX 560 graphics card and see how it can power modern games at 1080p. Seeing as how we do that a lot here on the channel anyway, I obliged and that's what we will be doing here today. The sample I received was the Sapphire Pulse RX 560 with 4GB of video memory. This card is equipped with a single fan heatsink design and for connectivity on the back, there's a DisplayPort, HDMI, and DVI port. Using DisplayPort, I had no issues using a 1440p 144Hz FreeSync monitor for game testing. Although I was using a 1440p monitor, I did all of my game testing at 1080p on high settings because I felt that most people going after a card like this would probably be targeting smooth game performance at 1080p. I also imagine with it being priced at $99, many esports gamers and first time builders might want to get something like this for CSGO, Overwatch, Dota 2, and other MOBAs out there, so I chose to focus some of the testing in those areas. Specifically where it pertains to Radeon Chill, which AMD introduced a few months back. The point of chill is to reduce the power being drawn by the GPU, which, which should lower temperatures as well. The trade-off being that you get a lower average FPS, but you save extra power for when you need it, and that's determined based on the pace of the game's action. So if you're standing still and not moving, the GPU will enter into an almost idle state that locks the frame rate based on parameters that you set yourself in the AMD drivers. Since I was gaming on a 144Hz monitor, I set it to a minimum of 60 and a max of 144, so it would lock the frame rate at 60 when I was not moving. I did do some testing as well with chill on versus chill off that we will get into briefly, but first the test system being used here today was utilizing the Ryzen 1400 CPU that I have overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz along with 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance RAM at 2933 megahertz. I also made sure to have the latest BIOS for the MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard, chipset drivers, as well as Crimson Driver 17.5.1 that came out just the other day for Prey. I also did have the GPU overclocked to 1375 megahertz on the core and 1900 megahertz on the memory while also increasing the power limit to an additional 75%. 1375 was the highest I could push my RX 560. At 1400, it would be an artifact and quite heavily, so I had to back it up to 1375 to stop it from crashing or artifacting at my desktop. Even though the RX 560 uses a single fan heatsink, the temperature stayed pretty cool on the Sapphire Pulse. After a long session of Rainbow Six Siege, temperatures leveled off at around 65 degrees Celsius and never went over that. While on games that supported Radeon Chill, I saw a drop in temp from about 3 to 5 degrees Celsius on average. I started off trying a few of the chill supported titles because the games do have to support the feature to take advantage of it. I did have an issue taking control of the parameters for Dota 2 within the Watman software, so it made the minimum below 60 FPS, but on the other titles it worked absolutely fine. Overwatch here saw an average of 80, 85 FPS and a minimum of 59, while CSGO got an average of 188 and a minimum of 144 on the Dust 2 map. And being that Prey just came out, I included that in my testing as well. I like testing this game as it utilizes the CPU very well and also takes advantage of the GPU power, power that's available to it. Most of the time through the benchmark, it was up over 3 gigabytes of VRAM being used, so it's nice to see a card at $99 with 4 gigabytes on it. When I looked at what would be on Nvidia's side for a competitor, you really have to get up to around $139 for the 1050 Ti, before you, before you start seeing 4 gigabytes being implemented. So I saw that also being the case in Rainbow Six Siege, which wasn't as heavily memory, memory reliant as Prey, but it was still allocating over 2 gigabytes of video memory throughout the course of the benchmark. Going into the average frame rate now, which were all done on 1080p at high settings with all the hardware previously mentioned and overclocked, Starting off on the left side, we have a group of esports titles like CSGO, which averaged over 200 frames per second. Rainbow Six Siege at 86 FPS, Overwatch and Dota 2 both averaging 100 FPS plus, and all keeping the minimum frame rate over 60, which will be very important for competitive players wanting to get an affordable GPU for these types of games. After that, performance does come down a bit in more demanding modern titles, but still gave a very playable experience. And if you get in there and tweak a few options like shadows down to medium, then you'll be getting a smooth 60 frames in no time. Notably, I would say Prey and Sniper Elite 4 ran the smoothest for games that went below 60 frames, but a lot of that may come down 
to having a FreeSync display as well. There are several affordable 1080p FreeSync monitors that would pair well with a card like this at $100. I'd be like, likely to recommend the Acer KG221Q that retails for $110. And it has FreeSync, but that's certainly not the only one out there. You'll be able to find quite a few on Amazon that are fairly cheap, and I'll link down in the description below as well to where you can find the AMD RX 560 graphics card that I tested here today. But that's all I have for you guys here on the RX 560. As always, please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and leave a like if you enjoyed this review. Overall, I was very happy with the level of 1080p performance on this $99 graphics card. To see how much power is at this price point is just crazy to me because I remember when this type of performance cost a lot more than $99. And I think this would be a good GPU for someone wanting to do esports games or as a upgrade path from something like a 750 Ti. I think it would fit that budget very well. And as long as you have reasonable ex expectations for what you're going to be getting out of the GPU. But thanks for everyone for watching, as well as AMD for sponsoring this video, and I will catch you guys next time. Ta-ra.